You may already have a fresh song loaded up. If not, press song. Then F1. Use the cursor keys or the mouse to highlight new song and press enter. Move to yes and press enter to confirm loading a new song. Now choose a sampling frequency and bit rate for the recording. Keep in mind that if you want to record an audio CD of the song, you must select 44.1 kilohertz. The Mixer Data Import screen allows you to import various settings from a different song. For now, choose either OK or Cancel. This screen allows you to name your song. We'll use the default settings for now, so click OK here and for the comment screen. If you want more details, check the operation guide under Creating a New Song. Now let's set the input levels. For this example, we'll use a rhythm machine connected to channels 1 and 2. At this point, let's recall the default mixer settings for the AW4416. These are always available by recalling scene 00. Press scene, then F1. Use the data dial to select scene 00. Use the cursor keys to select recall and press enter. Select OK to confirm. This scene resets the AW4416 to its default state, a fresh starting point. Now, back to setting the input levels. Start the rhythm machine and adjust the gain controls so the peak indicators light briefly at the loudest sounds, then pull back just a touch. This sets the level hitting the input stage of the mixer and is the last time your audio will be analog. Press Home and F1 to see the input levels for channels 1 through 24 in the display. Raise the stereo fader to zero. Press mixing layer 1 through 16. Make sure the on keys are lit for channels 1 and 2 and raise the faders to 0 dB. Watch the level meters in the screen and adjust the input levels. If the meters clip, lower the gain controls. With digital recording, you really want to avoid any clipping. This process sets the levels of the signals through the patch bay to the mixer. By the way, the default settings have patched input jacks 1 and 2 to input channels 1 and 2 on the mixer. For convenience, you may want to pair up these input jacks. To do this, press and hold select key 1 and press select key 2. Then move the cursor to input 1 to 2 and press enter. When linked, any mixing parameter changes you make to EQ, DSP and so on will be done for both channels. The exceptions are attenuation and pan, which are set separately for each channel. It's important to understand how input signals are routed for recording and monitor signals are routed during playback. It all starts at the input jack, and as we've already seen, in the default state, signals are routed to the corresponding channels on the mixer, input 1 to channel 1, 2 to 2, and so on. Next, we need to assign the mixer channels to buses, and then on to tracks in the recorder. The AW4416 allows you complete flexibility here. Any input or channel can be routed to any record track. For this example, we'll route channel 1 to track 1 via bus 1, and so on. To do this, press PAN, then F1. Use the cursor keys to select bus 1, and press ENTER. Since channel 2 is linked with 1, the same settings apply. Finish routing like this. Bus 1 and 2 are on, and the stereo bus is off. Now, we'll use PAN to send channel 1 to bus 1. Typically, Panning hard left will route to the odd-numbered buses, 1, 3, 5, and so on. Hard right will route to the even-numbered buses, 2, 4, 6, 8. So move the cursor to the pan knob of input channel 1 and pan it hard left. This means channel 1 will only be recorded on track 1. Set channel 2 to hard right to record it to track 2. By the way, this process allows you to easily route mixer channels to any track. We'll try this in the overdub example later in this video. The next step is to arm the tracks or set them to record ready mode. To do this, press record track select keys 1 and 2. 
Take a look at the level meters and lower the faders if the red segment at 0 dB lights at all. Another cool setting in the default state is that the input monitor mode of each track is set to auto. Now this means that the level meters for tracks in record ready mode will show the level of the input signal while the recorder is stopped and the level of the track playback signal while playing back. Now we'll assign the signal of monitor channels 1 and 2 to the stereo bus and listen via the monitor out or the phones. Remember, these are the recorded tracks on disc, not the live inputs. To do this, press Pan, F3, then the Mixing Layer Monitor key, so you're looking at the monitor channels, not the input channels. Pair channels 1 and 2, just like we did for the input channels. Press and hold select 1 and 2, then choose input 1 to 2, and press Enter. Make sure that the stereo bus buttons are on, and the bus 1 through 8 buttons are off. This means the signals will be sent to the stereo bus rather than an individual bus. Pan monitor channel 1 hard left and channel 2 hard right. Ah yes, time to make some music. Press RTZ to return to zero, the top of the tune. Then press and hold record and press play. Start making music. When you're finished, press stop. To listen to the track, press RTZ, then play. When you are satisfied with the performance, press stop. Then press record track select keys 1 and 2 to defeat the record ready mode for these tracks or press all safe to turn them all off at once. In this section, we'll follow the same steps and record a bass part to go along with the drums we just recorded. This will give us a chance to learn about other routing and monitoring options. Let's connect an instrument to input jack 8. This input offers both a balanced in as well as a high Z jack for high impedance instruments such as an electric guitar or bass. Now set the input level as we did earlier. Play the instrument and adjust the gain control so it lights at the loudest sound then back it off a bit. Press home then F1 to see the levels in the display. Press the mixing layer 1 through 16 key to see and adjust the channel level on the fader. Make sure channel 8 is on and raise the fader to 0 dB. You may want to turn the other channels off for easier viewing. Play the instrument and watch the levels. If it clips, lower the gain control. Next, we'll assign the signal to a bus, routing it to a track in the recorder. Let's use the view function to make our changes. Press view, then F1. This screen shows the status of all mix parameters for the selected channel. Press Select 8 to view and change the parameters for channel 8. Move the cursor to the pan route area. Turn bus 3 assign on. This routes the signal from input channel 8 to recorder track 3. Set the pan. Now press record track select 3 to arm the track for recording. Make sure that on key 8 is lit then check and adjust the level to track 3 as necessary. The last step before overdubbing is to set the monitoring. We want to hear the drums recorded on tracks 1 and 2, plus the bass signal being recorded on track 3. To do this, press Pan, then F3. Turn monitor channel 3 stereo on, and bus assign 1 through 8 off. Make sure channels 1 and 2 are set the same way. You may want to add EQ and use a dynamics processor to sweeten the sound. To learn about this, take a look at the operation guide under Using EQ and the Dynamics Processor. Well, time to overdub. Press RTZ to return to zero. Now, press and hold Record and Play. 
To adjust the volume of the drums during playback, press the mixing layer monitor key and adjust the faders. When you are finished recording, press stop. To listen back, press RTZ, then play, and raise the fader to 0 dB. When you're satisfied with the overdub, press Record Track Select 3 to disable the Record Ready mode. There are some other very cool functions that make recording even easier. These include undo, redo, markers, and auto punch. Say you don't like the last take. Just press undo and record another take. Pressing undo eliminates the last recording without worrying about leftover heads or tails on the track. Want to record repeatedly from the same location? Assign a marker to jump very quickly to that spot. And in just a moment, we'll learn about auto punch. At some point, you may want to submix or bounce some of your tracks to free up additional tracks on the recorder. For example, you may want to record your drums on separate tracks, then submix them to a stereo pair later. First, we'll need to route the source tracks we want to bounce to the destination track. For this example, let's bounce the stereo drums from tracks 1 and 2 to a single track such as number 8. Press Pan, F3, then move the cursor here and press Enter to route them to bus 8. By the way, bus 8 is sent to tracks 8 and 16. Let's arm track 8 for recording by pressing here. Repeat these steps for any other tracks you want to bounce. To watch the levels while recording the submix, press Home, F2, then Monitor. Press RTZ, then Record and Play to start recording. You could set up an auto mix to automatically make any changes you want, or use the faders in real time. Press stop when you're finished, then RTZ and play to hear it back. If you're not satisfied, just press undo and do it again. Remember that this whole process happens in the digital domain, so the bounce tracks sound exactly like the source tracks with no loss of fidelity. There are two types of punch in and out manual and auto. Manual lets you drop in and out of record using the transport keys or by using an optional foot switch. With the foot switch, the whole punch process can be controlled by your foot, making it really convenient to wear more than one hat as player and engineer. Auto punch allows the AW4416 to engineer while you concentrate on your playing. For example, you can specify a pre-roll time ahead of and a post-roll time after the punch-in point. And Auto Punch provides subframe or millisecond accuracy. You can also repeat the punch and even rehearse it before you record. Again, it's like having an extra pair of hands to handle the engineering for you. To set this function up, first make the monitor settings. Press Track, then F1. Move the cursor to Auto and press Enter. Now set the Auto Punch in and out points. Start listening to the track play back. When you hear the point at which you'd like to punch in, hold down set and press in. The in key will light letting you know the in point has been set. Do the same thing for the out point, this time pressing set and out. Refer to the operation guide under adjusting the location of a locate point to learn how to move the in and out points with millisecond accuracy. Now press utility then F3. Move the cursor to the pre-roll or post-roll fields and use the data dial to set the times before and after the punch points. The default is 5 seconds of pre and post punch. Well, we're ready to rehearse the auto punch. First, press the record track select key for the track you want to record, in this case track 3. Make sure the in and out keys are lit, then press auto punch. 
To rehearse, press play. Playback begins from the pre-roll point. Here you can see the record key start flashing and the monitor signal changes from the track playback to the input signal. However, it's not actually recording. Notice that the AW4416 stops at the post-roll point and auto-locates back to the pre-roll point. Press play to rehearse again. Or to record, press and hold record and play. This time, it will actually record your performance. Remember, you've always got undo if you're not happy with the performance. To listen to the punch, press auto-punch to make it go dark, then press play. Virtual tracks allow you to record up to eight different versions of a track and then go back and choose the best take or even piece one together of all the best parts. All audio tracks use one virtual track at any given time. So to record or playback a different virtual track, just press track, then F2. This display shows which virtual track is currently in use for audio tracks one through 16. To select a different virtual track, just move the cursor to the one you want to use and press enter. Now you can record and play back the newly selected virtual track as you would with any other audio track. For more information on virtual tracks such as pairing, naming, and editing, read through Track and Virtual Track Operations in the Operation Guide. Quick Record quickly sets up and arms all 16 tracks for recording. This is perfect when you want to record a live band on separate tracks or for flying tracks in from an external multi-track recorder in one pass. Pushing Quick Record resets all patch settings and mix parameters. So if you have some mixer settings in the current memory, store them in a scene or song before pressing Quick Record. You'll see how to do this at the end of the mixing section later in this video. This display allows you to select which groups of inputs are sent to tracks 1 through 8 and 9 through 16 for recording. Your choices are the analog inputs 1 through 8 or inputs 1 through 8 of an I.O. card in slot 1 or slot 2. Make your selections using the data dial. Then click Execute and OK to confirm. You can adjust the recording level using the faders of channels 1 through 16. When you're ready to record, press and hold record and play. When you finish recording, press stop, then press all safe to cancel record ready and the mute status for all tracks. For more details, read using the quick record function in the operation guide.